right. Hi, I'm Michael. Hope this works. Um, I do like large graphs of objects. Uh, why is that? So I work on managed language runtimes, which means that these runtimes manage the lifetime of objects for you. So you can just write new something, and you will get an object. And once you don't need it anymore, and the system can prove that it's not needed, then the system will get rid of it. And usually, um, these systems like accumulate a hu huge graphs of objects, which somehow need to be managed. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. First of all, disclaimer, probably read from bottom to top. <laughs> I don't do JavaScript, so I do managed language runtimes, VMs. I'm a C++ hacker. Um, so the code you are going to see is JavaScript, but it's probably wrong in all sorts of levels. <laughs> I do work on garbage collection, should be clear by now. I actually attended this university as a student and have not too many fond memories of this room here because it's usually where exams happen. <laughs> so it's that. Um, did a little bit of studies and then I got into the field of managed language runtimes where I worked on Dart before and now I work on V8 and JavaScript and the uh, Chrome and Blink rendering runtime in general. So what is this about? Um, nothing more than the computational model of the web essentially. Um, I realized that the PHP folks might not like this, but for me, myself, this is client-side rendering. It's DOM and JavaScript. And I want to give you an overview of how this works, how frameworks play into this, why is it that way maybe, maybe it's not ideal. Um, and I want to give you an intuition of what's actually going on behind the scenes when JavaScript runs, when things like that thing up there run, like you append something to your DOM, you create a DOM element, and you just create your client-side rendered web app. Um, but before we go into that, let's have a quick look at the components that are involved when actually doing some, um, this kind of stuff. So first we have the web, which I consider as DOM, which is essentially specced in a cross-platform language independent spec in HTML. So for HTML itself, you don't need a runtime, you don't need C++, you don't need JavaScript. It's, it's just an abstract f um, formalism of the DOM, essentially. It's specified in this web interface definition language, and yeah, it doesn't have to do anything with JavaScript per se. And traditionally, these objects, though, while they are described on an abstract way, they are implemented in a rendering engine. I work on Chrome. For us, this is Blink. Blink forked from WebKit at some point, so this means C++ for us. Then there is this JavaScript. Um, there is lots of different languages these days where you can actually, which you can actually use on the web, but it all boils down to at some point JavaScript or versions of JavaScript, um, which might change in the future, but for now it is JavaScript. And this is what's essentially used to interact with the DOM. If you use frameworks, then th these are the things that happen behind the scenes, right? Um, there's no, no black magic going on there. And essentially, it's also interesting that this is untrusted code that is executed in an, in an isolated environment. So there's a VM running in your browser that kind of makes sense of this code you write up there. And the interesting part is that this code is completely untrusted. So the user of the browser doesn't have to care about it. The, the VM essentially isolates it. Um, this example is going to be very important because we'll use it throughout this whole talk to see what's going on. So it's actually very simple. Um, you add an event listener for when the DOM content is actually loaded on a page, and then you essentially append one more child, which you create, one more diff element. But before we're going into that, where does that all play? Like, wh where does it all work out? Wh where are we in the stack? I realize you probably have seen this one before, and it ha happens to be in a lot of talks these days. It's just because people are uh, lazy, so <laughs> I'm lazy too, so I will reuse it. Um, well, V8 parses your JavaScript, creates an abstract syntax tree, we've heard that. We run bytecode, we get feedback, we optimize and compile it, and then we run it. Um, so where does all this client-side rendering happen? Um, maybe it's not completely obvious, but it's just running the code. So there is usually only very few things that V8 or any JavaScript engine can do up front. And it actually all is rendered while you're running it. That is the important takeaway here. And then there is a browser. For me, it's Chrome, but it's very similar in other browsers, which just essentially bundles together lots and lots of components. 
<coughs> and it might be surprising that browser itself is like one of those Lego bricks here, but for Chrome at least, it's nothing more than that. It's, there is a message passing engine on at the very bottom, and it's lots and lots of components talking through this message passing engine, this Mojo interface, with each other. So there is a browser, which is essentially the shim you're seeing. There is a renderer, which is in charge of actually rendering the content, the DOM that you're creating. And there is a JavaScript engine, like, like V8 is one. And there is lots and lots of more things, like Skia for 2D rendering. There is <coughs> PDFium for PDF stuff. There is WebRTC, and all these things are these days um, bundled into components and talk via this, via this message API. So you might ask yourself, where is the actual challenge? It looks like a nice abstraction. Obviously, in reality, it's a bit, bit, uh, bit different, and there are lots of shortcuts that, that people um, use and, and break abstractions. But there is also a fundamental challenge there, which is, um, let's, if we look at V8 and Blink, it's that C++, uh, like the renderer, usually deals with C++ objects, it's the DOM, and V8 deals with JavaScript objects, and these are represented as raw memory. Um, and so there is a mismatch. This doesn't really work out. You cannot just call things on, on, on um, C++ objects and assume that something will happen in JavaScript and vice versa. So there is some extra um, thing you needed that kind of holds this thing together and makes it uh, work and play out nicely. And this is essentially what we are going to look at for the next few minutes. Um, I want to give an overview of how V8 and how Blink work together. Um, it's both these days um, managed environments, meaning that V8 has a garbage collector that takes care of, of actually managing your objects and lifetime of your objects. And there is also Blink, the rendering engine, which also takes care of the DOM objects. So they are not manually allocated and deallocated, but there is also a garbage collector behind that one. Um, this is now where the actual, the fundamental things come in. So objects come in halves. If you have a DOM object, it usually comes in a, ha in a JavaScript half where you actually can access properties, can access elements, do certain things on it. And it usually also comes with a part that sits in the, on the Blink side, the DOM object, which you can all sorts uh, can call things on it and do things with it that are actually specced by the DOM specification. So quite unsurprisingly, these things hold references to each other so they can communicate with each other. And essentially, if you look at the bottom, if you, you use document in your script, you are using a pair of these things um, that are connected with each other and can talk to each other. This is nice and simple, as long as it involves just one thing. Let's try and dive through this example here. Um, again, it's the JavaScript you've seen before. Um, we are creating it's like when the DOM content is loaded, we want to append one more diff element, with the difference that we actually have a full HTML thingy here now with body and span element already sitting there. And the idea is, I want to um, go through this now and give you an overview of what actually happens at runtime in the renderer and in the V8 engine. So we'll walk through it. The code is still on the left, um, statement by statement. Essentially, when the parser sees this, at some point, it will create an HTML document node on the Blink side. There's no JavaScript involved, nothing more happening. There's just a, just a document um, that sits there. It will then parse head and script, essentially realize, oh, we need to do something in V8, initialize a few things, and then it will reach this function. For the sake of this example, assume that V8 compiles it or does something with this thing in an eager fashion, meaning that it takes this whole function compiles it to some code. My, it might, this code might be an abstract syntax tree, it might be bytecode, it might be optimized code. Let's not worry about that. We just have something on V8's managed heap that represents this code object. It then sees, oh, we need document. OK, this is the time now we lazily initialize something on the V8 side because you want to essentially refer to a document from JavaScript. So we create this wrapping object on the JavaScript side, which you can use to talk to the HTML document, which we, you will do by calling add event listener. Essentially, um, you are communicating with the Blink side object um, to tell us, hey, I have an event listener with this string, and I want to call create div. Now it gets a bit complicated. 
gonna throw this at you. Behind the scenes, what actually is done, you have a hash map of something. For the purpose of this example, assume that the string lives on the blink side. It's not always clear where it lives, but we can just say it lives here. Um, and we, we, with this string, we essentially say, hey, there is an event listener attached to that, which is a closure in JavaScript terms. It's a function that you call, and the code you call for this function is essentially the code that we've created before. All right, now we are at the end of the script tag. So what's, what's going to happen next? We're going to see body, okay? Parsing body element means that we have a body element in our DOM tree, right? Next thing, span, nothing surprising, we have a span element here. Okay, now actually we parse the end statements, and now the DOM content is actually loaded. We don't have any images, which we wouldn't actually care because it's DOM content loaded. Um, so we're gonna execute the event listener, we're gonna execute create diff. Um, we see here that we want a, a local variable, new diff, and it should essentially point to a DOM element. So here is this thing, you have your DOM part, you have your JavaScript part. For the purpose of this example, just assume that the diff element is floating around somewhere in V8. And well, finally, you want to do document body um, append child. Do we already have a document, That's, that should be simple. Um, we, wanna get, we can get on the DOM side from document to body, that's also possible, but we are referencing body from JavaScript, so we need a body element too. So this is what we have right now. And finally, we can actually call a pen child and get this thing into the DOM tree. And this is essentially what happens all the time when you execute client-side rendering in with um, server-side rendering um, also mixed in here. It looks a bit complicated. It requires some understanding of actually what's going on. And this was a very simple example, so I'll leave it up to you what m modern frameworks can actually do with this. It, like, I didn't mention actually, but all these graphs I'm showing here are graphs taken on real websites while browsing the web. They are pre-layouted because it takes hours to actually lay out such things and then rendered also in a web app. So um, you can see this gets complicated pretty quickly. Um, so what are we going to do about it? How are we actually reasoning about that? Because I can imagine people writing a web app, it's just overwhelming of the, st the, the stuff is, that's going on is just overwhelming and it's not really clear uh, what's connected here and there. Obviously, you're not going to create a graph like that yourself on paper. So you probably have heard of DevTools. Um, if you have not heard of DevTools and you're doing web development, you probably should look it up on your favorite search engine because it really helps a lot. There is this one thing in DevTools which we only added recently, uh, recently um, which is the capability of actually uh, investigating what's there on the DOM tree. So previously, you only had JavaScript there and you couldn't really, or it was very hard to make sense of the connected DOM. Since very recently, like just two or three weeks ago, um, we, we landed a few things that actually let you inspect the DOM too. And so I, I'm encouraging you to check out the documentation. If you're doing client-side development, then you should che definitely check out the latest version of Chrome Canary because you can already use it there. Um, and you can use the memory tab, get a snapshot, and then inspect your elements. And essentially what you will see um, for this very example I showed you, you will see something like that, like window retains a document. Obviously, reality is a bit more complicated, so there is a hidden element somewhere in between. Um, and we, we append stuff in text and so on. So you see a bit of more of browser internals, but I think it should really help you um, getting an overview of, of, of what's going on. There is one final thing I want to mention, and this is actually... Um, stuff I'm working on. Um, it's garbage collection and what the browsers can do for you is pretty interesting um, because essentially you need to think now about the problem or actually you don't need to think about the problem but we as, as engineers working on browsers need to now think um, about the problem of how to reclaim um, bad objects, like how, how does it work, right? Because essentially you're writing JavaScript, you don't care about when an object is unreachable or when an object is unused and you want to get rid of it. 
So um, the brief, very, very brief introduction is that, um, at least in Chrome, we use so-called tracing garbage collector, which essentially figures out if things are alive or dead by just walking this whole graph and marking each object that you can reach as life. Every object that then remains, um, you can reclaim, right? Because it's not referenced anymore. There is no way a JavaScript application <laughs> can ever retrieve this anymore because you cannot just reference it by name anymore. So you can get rid of it. In the context of different components, though this creates the tricky problem or the interesting problem, we also call it a challenge, um, like positive thinking here, that V8 is working on raw memory, it's JavaScript, Blink is C++. Um, so that really usually doesn't work too well together, um, especially when, when you have to deal with memory management. So we created a system actually that can um, cooperatively detect dead objects even across component boundaries. So what will happen is that at some point you initiate a garbage collection and then the Blink garbage collector there for C++ will actually walk its tree. It will walk the tree from root. The root is a term, a term for something that, like a global variable registers or something, like something that is always alive. And it will walk and mark this thing. And then usually that's where garbage collection for some component ends, right? Because it doesn't know anything else. We actually taught the renderer to, to communicate with other components, in this case is V8, and tell it, hey, I also have references for you, you might want to check out and actually walk your tree from those references. So that's what actually happens um, there. So all these objects now, like the whole system, built up this global knowledge of what's life, what's dead, and finally you can create, uh, actually not create, you can reclaim this diff element. And this is what happens every time, all the time in your browser. Like when you run web apps, um, garbage collection, usually tries to get out of your way, but at some point uh, we'll collect garbage for you and this is what the runtime does in order to maintain a small memory footprint. So I'm already at takeaways. I realize this has all been very complicated, or at least it was for me. It took me one and a half years to actually learn about this stuff and kind of get the intuition of what's going on in a browser. Um, the, the takeaway should be very simple for you. DOM and JavaScript are separated. When you do complicated things involving DOM elements, just have it in the back of your head that there might be something happening across the boundary. It might not be the fastest thing. So if you really have an application fast path, you might want to stay in JavaScript. But the browser can deal with it. Like there is everything the browser needs to do is implemented these days in all of the browsers actually. It's not just Chrome, but it's in all of these browsers, they can, they can deal with these things um, these days. You should also take away that DevTools is pretty cool and can help you navigate complex object graphs for a better understanding. We actually use it for finding leaks. Like when we talk to people um, that tell us, hey, there is a, a memory leak in our um, application. It just, you let it run for a day and then memory is like one gigabyte and what should we do? Um, we usually just use DevTools um, and that's enough. Like, there is no black magic involved. We are not asking some oracle what's going on there. We just use DevTools, take a heap snapshot, what it's called, which will just take a snapshot of what's, of what's there. And then we look at, hey, where is, I don't know, the biggest arrays, where are they retained? And then you actually can find these things. Mm. We also use it for finding inefficiencies, obviously. Like, leaks are the worst um, because memory accumulates. But we also use it to find inefficiency in apps which just Un, like objects are not, not really useful and they are hanging around. <coughs> and the, the last takeaway is maybe garbage collection can actually reclaim memory across components. Um, that might be interesting if you are into memory management, like I'm, I'm working on, on memory management for several years now, and usually it's a, like this closed world view where you know this thing can, can um, handle memory itself decently, but as soon as you have you connect it to something else, then, then things fall apart. Um, browser is actually pretty good in this, this architecture game where everything is loosely coupled and they communicate with each other. Um, last but not least, the demo. I'm not doing a live demo because it will never work. Um, so that's just the screencast recorded. This is an example where I just attached an event listener somewhere in the DOM. 
it was previously really tricky to figure out what's going on. Um, these days, you just saw me opening, um, it's, by the way, it's called Leaks, so I can search for it. It's easy to find. Um, so it's just about opening dev tools these days, taking a memory uh, snapshot, and then if you don't know that you need to search for leak, obviously you're going to do some navigation, tr the filtering stuff and uh, sort stuff. Um, if you know that it's called leak and it's leaking, well, then you have an easier time. Um, you just search for it and you will notice that actually once it's selected, you will see the whole retaining path um, of, the, of this thing here on the bottom, which is essentially the thing I've uh, showed you before. It's the JavaScript heap that is connected to the DOM and back, like there is two, two borders in there where we cross um, components. That's already it. I encourage you to, to actually, well, obviously follow the HES and check out our latest blog post uh, on this thing. We, we explain this in details um, in this blog post, which just um, happened to, to be li go live, uh, I think, yesterday or two days ago. And otherwise, just hit me up for questions. I'm, I'm around in the area. Thank you. <laughs>